welcome Chargeheads to another episode of Chargeheads UK and I've messed up I've completely effed up I've got a EV meet this morning and I plugged in I don't know what's going on it says 54 miles I'm not going to get it home and back and I swear to God, I didn't mean to do this. So maybe we'll show how easy it is to charge. It will cost slightly more, obviously. Let's get to the EV event. Let's go. So here she is. She's a beaut, isn't she? Brew Point, Bedford. Funnily enough, I know that there's some chem power charges here because I've been here before. Let's uh, get a quick charge for five minutes and uh, see how much we get. Uh, got 38 miles at the moment, so let's see how much it will give us. CCS2, because it looks like they've got Chadamo here as well, which is kind of a dying breed. But it's not like the Tesla chargers where you plug in and it works straight away. Unfortunately not. There we go, wait until it goes blue. There we go, it's connected and it will go green. And they've got a pater terminal down here, which I kind of missed last time. So it's just tap and go, which is kind of the standard now. So down at the bottom, bong. Making life a bit easier. So what's it doing? Is it working? Authenticating, ah, oh, there we go. Oh, something that's really cool on this is once the handshake is done, if you've seen from my work videos, it'll give you a QR code and you can get your phone on the QR code and then you can go have a drink, go and have a you know, soft drink, of course, or some food, and then um, it will tell you on your phone how fast it's charging. So you don't actually have to look at your uh, car app or if your car app's crap, you haven't got a Tesla, obvs, um, then uh, that's the situation. Oh, look at this. Actually, not too bad, 87, 88, 89. So what happens is these two, four, six, eight chargers are connected to a cabinet, which is in here. I reckon they've got a few cabinets in here, you know. Let's have a look. Can we see over top? Uh, they've got two double cabinets, which is, so that's 400 kilowatts in each cabinet. So theoretically, well, the cables aren't thick enough for the ampage, but I reckon it's capable of probably doing about 100 kilowatts let's see what it's got to now bear in mind my car is really low although the battery is a bit cold yeah 100 so i reckon i reckon it might be able to do a bit more than that i don't know what the price per kilowatt hour is so um yeah we'll have to see work it out later but 93 i can deal with that uh i'll go for a quick p by the time i've done that i'll leave job done for pound 30 four pound 40 26 percent charge we'll have a look see how many miles we got um oh, there's no button on here like the tesla that's annoying um so i guess we'll just press that like, you can either press the red button or that one there yeah, stop stop in four pound 60 for five kilowatts Ooh, that's about 85 plus p rubbish much cheaper charging at home or at tesla chargers what can i say brew point sort it out or whoever's uh, sorting out the um, charging here. But the uh, the cable's pretty bloody thick on this, so the ampage is really strong. So I reckon it probably can do a lot more than 100, um, 100 kilowatts, but on we go. Here we go, entry. Oh, there's a few people here. How do you, mate? You are right? Good morning. Oh dear. Can you feel the gaze? Yeah. Obviously, I shouldn't have been. Obviously, I shouldn't have been looking at it. But here we are at Cafe in the Machine, and we happen to bring the EV meet at the same time as a supercar event, which I didn't know. So there's lots of uh, really loud cars here, which makes up for our very quiet cars. So we've got Ferraris, Aston Martins, Porsches. We've got all sorts of uh, funky motors. R8. Spider Porsche GT3 RS, or rather, I don't know what the you know, I'm not a Ferrari pod, so I wouldn't know which is which, but maybe whack in the comments what that red one is. And uh, someone's drawn on this white one, I wasn't sure if it was, uh, you know, some <laughs> someone's uh, it's obviously something to do with a charity event, which is great. So, you know, there we go, some rather exciting cars, but we're not here for 
the ice cars, of course. We're here for the electric cars. Oh, this is a bit interesting. Some sort of special effect going on here. Ah, that is pretty cool. Yeah. Car and, car and approves. Uh, 3D printed. It kind of looks like uh, black Del Monte's all over it. Um, <clears throat> IG Black Crystal AMG. Uh, black. That is pretty cool, yeah. Get a few pictures of that later. So we are here with Andy and his 220,000 mile Tesla, which we'll have a look at in a moment. Rusty's here, my white Tesla, now done 92,000 miles. John's here in his Beetle, and we've got Clyde coming as well. So not a massive turnout, but you know, it's all about keeping that monthly thing going to uh, encourage more. Here we are, we've got Andy in front of us. Hi Andy, how Hi. are we doing? Hi, very good. Now Andy has got multiple cars. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a very exciting one that I've been wanting to see for quite some time. Um, so tell tell us, uh, Andy, what is special about this Tesla Model 3? And what model is it? Right, so it's a slightly rare one, actually. I mean, and, and I know that sounds strange from a Tesla perspective, but actually it's quite, uh, it's what they would call a stealth, okay? So actually it's the performance version, but if you look closely, it obviously doesn't have the 20 inch wheels, doesn't have the big brakes. Um, and you can see it's riding relatively high, so it actually has a different suspension setup as well. So if you, um, but it does have uh, the performance motors, so it has all the performance of a Stealth, and if, uh, of a regular performance, but in fact they do say, because it's on 18 inch wheels, the regular Tesla 18 inch wheels, and they're a lot lighter, and the diameter is slightly lower, actually the performance is meant to be slightly better. Uh -huh. Now I have been doing some performance testing, do you want me to talk about that quickly? Yeah, yeah. please, yeah, far so away. I've got my draggy here, uh, so the first thing I did naturally with the car, although when I first had it, I had some mixed up tyres, uh, so I bought it on, because uh, I got the what, relatively... What are you running at the moment? The... So I've literally just bought brand new wheels and tyres for it, because it was just cheaper than buying brand new tyres. So I bought a second hand <laughs> brand new set Which of ones did you buy? I reckon they were the ones I was probably going to buy. Uh, Bristol? <laughs> Kingswoods. Right. Uh, I, I uh, it was a guy on uh, basically eBay or was it? He, he put them on every channel. I imagine. Okay. I was surprised he didn't. Well, how sell. much did you pay? I paid seven hundred pounds for everything. Ah, that's really end. good. Yeah. yeah. The, the only slight downside was I asked. I wanted the TPMSs in them, right. which they do have, but they're for the newer car, so they don't work. So that was a slight thing. So now I just have a TPS warning on the top, but obviously I've just got to replace them or take them out. Um, so you, I got my draggy out. Now, um, the special thing about this car is it's very, very high mileage. Uh, it's some, uh, as, as far as I know, it's the highest mileage one in the UK. Um, it's, I bought it at 218,000 miles. Uh, it's currently got 220 and a half. I've done about 2,000 in it in a few weeks. Um, I'm dialing it completely now. The story was that I had actually bought a brand new one um, from Hello, Tesla. <laughs> Yay! As you can see, <laughs> it's getting really daily at the minute. Yeah. Like, T will come and talk to you in a minute, all right? There we go. Play, the pl yeah. Playing with the games so, inside. I've got both my daughters in there at the minute. So we're at Caffeine and Machine, and uh, yeah. the great thing about Teslas is that they've, uh, you can hook them up to an Xbox controller, and it's got Netflix and Disney Plus. Yeah, and absolutely. Yeah. Keeps, so keeps you entertained. quite good for two daughters <laughs> um, of eight and ten. Um, so where was I? Yeah. So uh, draggy I'd, stats. I'd, yeah. um, so on the draggy stats front. I immediately put a draggy on it because um, I've got loads of performance cars, so I've got a draggy. Um, and I just took it straight out with a relatively high status charge, about 90%. I think I sw switched on the nav so it was hunting for a supercharger which warmed the battery up. Yep, nice and little I trick. I think I hit 0 to 60, was 3.4. Um, it was hitting 100 in 8. Um, I couldn't officially do the quarter mile on my private bit of road because it's not quite long enough, so I think I lifted and did an 11.7, which is ballpark. Oh wow! Um, yeah, because this got a uh, eleven point nine with the boost uh, Tesla boost on it. Yeah, I'm so eleven sure seven. Once, wow. once you boost one of these, the the performance isn't that different. It's just the initial kind of ten meters or so, isn't it? Where the the performance motor's got a bit more get up and go. Weirdly, if you watch the car wow <coughs> video where they've got one of these and one of these, mm. um, they do exactly the same test. The, when you put it down, the, the the performance just leaps away by a couple of car lengths. Weirdly, on the car wow video, and of course, I don't know what the state of charge of the cars was or anything like that, then the long range pulled ahead of it, which yeah. wasn't what should have happened, but did happen. So um, I, I suspect with the boost and this one, the performance, maybe apart from the 0-60 time, this might be a few tenths quick, I don't think there'd be much in it. Like you say, they're both 11 second quarter cars out of the box. But the point I was making was at 220,000 miles, this is seems pretty much bang on. Uh, 
the the performance you'd expect from a new one. So Andy, um, can you tell us about you know it's done two hundred twenty thousand miles, which is a lot of miles. Um, so you know, what's the degradation of the battery like? Because you know that's a, a scary thought for many potential EV owners or people that own EVs right now. Absolutely right. So um, you know, there's a lot of fud on the internet uh, about you know they'll only do hundred thousand miles and you have to pay fifteen grand to get them changed straight away and all that sort of stuff. And in a way. Um, I kind of wanted to buy this one to disprove that. Now it might bite me, I don't know. <laughs> so far so good, yeah, it's yeah. only been 2,000 miles in. So the car originally was used as, the reason it's only four years old and it's got 220,000 miles on uh, was it was used, uh, the, the guy that had it before me, uh, it was a private hire vehicle, mm. but it was used by a company called Saga, you know, the old holiday bread people. So it was picked up from Middle England, sort of Derbyshire, driven to the South Coast pretty much every night. Wow, um, So okay. it was doing 1,000 miles a week. A lot of motorway driving then, basically. Basically a lot of motorway driving, okay. and that, that might be in its favour. Because this particular car has been on the Chain, James and Kate uh, YouTube channel, which is off the back of Cleveland EV, which is a well-known garage, uh, great place. If, if you don't know it, check it out. And uh, they've already done, they did a review of this car, having done 200 and, was it 210,000 miles, that sort of mark? I think the video that they did, it was exactly 200,000 200, miles. I think, I think it was just over from just, memory. Just, but, just over. And, and they, he said that, yeah, he was just about to sell it and everything was in really good condition, other than the mirror, which looks like it's actually fixed now. I fixed the mirror. Uh -huh. I've, done the, I've painted the seals and I've oh, fixed wow. mud guards because that, ah. that was the other bits and pieces that weren't, that weren't yeah. working. Yeah, and yeah, mine, mine hasn't got mud guards and uh, I'll show people another time, but yeah, it does uh, kick up the stone which isn't great for the uh, paint. The, the, the seal paintwork was bad. Um, <coughs> right. So I've, I've done that myself. Um, uh, you know, it didn't take me long to do, and the, the mud guards are very easy to fit, so I, I, I put those straight on. In terms of the, the main question about battery degradation, obviously, yeah. so it's got 220,000 miles. Um, the original video, which got quite a lot of hits, I think was at 200k miles. Uh, at that point, it, it was measured at 12% degradation, and I think that was on the Tesi app. Yep. Um, since then, I've plugged in um, an OBX link, uh, and uh, put in a harness and I'm using scan my Tesla which is uh, uh, really decent it's, it's reporting a battery capacity now of 60 watt 66 kilowatt hours so that's down from 75 which is basically what the Tesiac reported as well so it's got 12% degradation at 220,000 miles so okay. you, I mean they, they, they say expect 5 or 6% maybe every 100,000 miles so in theory you know it could run to 400,000 before it would be down to 70% Wow. Um, and that's probably true but of course there might also be a critical failure of one batch of cells or something like that the unfortunate thing about the big battery packs is it, it only takes a few cells to render them uh, obsolete or, or broken um, and in a way it's a shame because actually if you could just replace those few cells if they made them easy to do that mm. uh, the battery pack could be brought back to life quite easily now in the Model S and X because they're modular you can just take yeah. the model, model uh, in the Model 3 I think it's three big long modules and it's a little bit harder to do yeah um, so basically so far so good I mean it hasn't changed obviously I've only done 2,000 miles I think it's done sort of 20,000 miles since the James and Kate thing and the, the degradation doesn't seem to have got any worse okay talking to other owners it looks like they drop off fairly quickly in the first hundred thousand miles yeah I mean not fast, but I mean you know you'll see more degradation in the first hundred thousand miles and then it just seems to level off well my, mine's done 92,000 miles and not, last time I charged it to a hundred percent uh, in the cold weather and it was sort of low 280s but you see that you charge your 100 percent this morning i did it this morning and just what, what I was it to, showing to just balance them out a little bit yeah. just get the bms working uh and it was showing 273 100 uh, percent okay, and obviously it's, this is at five degrees yeah so it obviously takes that uh into account but i think the important thing is is to look at the remaining capacity yeah so if you i mean you can calculate that by looking at how much energy goes into the battery when you charge it uh, just look at the two percentage points and you can extrapolate that to see what your battery size yeah. is. Um, when I did that and then when I checked it against the uh, diagnostic equipment, it came out exactly the same. It said I've got 66 kilowatt hours remaining. And that's given me, yeah, like 273 from 100% to naught, which you never do. But, um, you know, in theory, I've, I've got that range. Well, Andy, I definitely need to <clears throat> come and have a visit because uh, it'd be great if 
if you're okay with me doing it, you know, connecting Rusty to find out what the degradation is, Absolutely. and maybe have a look at the other toys that uh, you might have there at the same time. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to get a date in. But yeah, if we uh, let's have a look at the actual figures because I want to prove to everyone that it does have that many miles. Because people might be saying, oh no, it's probably only got about you know sixty thousand or what have you. But yeah, yeah, let's have a look. Yeah. Let's see how the girls are getting on. This is Lola. Hi, Lola. Hi. So you're in this uh, your daddy's Tesla. And um, sorry, what, what was your what was your name? Ava Lily. Ava Lily. And what? Let's let's start with Lola first. What do you like about the Tesla? That we can play games and it goes really fast. Oh <laughs> really? So what's the best thing about it? Fast or games? I think um, games. Yeah. Because most cars can go fast. That's true. That's true. There's lots of fast cars here today. But can you play a cool game like you're playing at the moment? And you've you've just uh, you've just accomplished something on the game, haven't you? What? You just meant you just came first. Yeah, four times in a row. Wow! And and what's your favourite thing about the car? Probably that I can play Sudoku because it's my most favourite game. Ever. You've got that on Sudoku. your phone. Oh, no. cool! Okay. But it's like really big, so I can see, see it a bit more better. That's awesome. All right. Well, thank you very much for telling us about what your favourite things on the Tesla are, and maybe you'll be in a video again soon. Yeah. All right. Take care. Bye. So here is uh, Andy's app, and as you can see down the bottom here, dual motor. To can you see that? Two hundred and twenty thousand miles, five hundred and seventy-one. There we go. So, Andy, have you got any other plans for the uh, for the Tesla in terms of modifications or in terms of servicing or uh, longevity? Um, yeah, so additions. The, so the thing I really well. I like lots about EVs. Uh, I'm a bit of a fan. So I mean, um, as as so I've driven a lot of internal combustion engine vehicles over the years. What I particularly like driving about EVs is the instant throttle response. Um, this has a lot of power. So I mean, it's almost unnecessarily quick as a road car. But um, certainly on a track, because uh, I, I sprint a lot of cars, sprint a lot of IC cars at Northfield and so on and so forth. Off the apex, nothing will touch this. Literally nothing will touch this. Uh, the other thing I like about it is that I don't have to worry about a sump pan and I don't have to worry about an oil pickup, so I can fit slicks to this. Mm -hmm. uh, depending on the category that you have to run it in, because some require a roll cage if you do that. But um, I can fit any tyre to this as grippy as possible and the, the motors won't care, so I won't be able to blow it out by calling high lateral G. Um, so I was thinking about that, possibly some suspension work. Um, again, I think Tesla kind of give you all the power. So there probably isn't much we can do in terms of power upgrades, but certainly in terms of suspension. And I'd like to, I would like to chase a quarter mile. I'd like to see the mid 11. Yeah. Maybe I'll take the rear seats out. Maybe <laughs> I'll do something like that. Uh, maybe I'll fold the mirrors in, we'll see. I don't know. Uh, maybe me and you need to get down to something. Yeah, to definitely, go, go together, definitely. I don't think there'll be that much in it. Well, may, maybe uh, maybe once uh, the Nginx uh, uh, boost has been fitted to that. That might be a quite a good, that would be very uh, good little race. Yeah, yes. two hundred twenty thousand mile performance versus an engine X yeah. ninety thousand mile. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, long range. Yeah, upset a few race. Upset a few ice cars. And look, <laughs> Clive's here talking about motorsport. So yeah, it's good to see that Clive's arrived, fashionably late. <laughs> but no, that's great. So um, so yeah, so basically things to make it more track worthy. And you're going to keep it road legal. You're not going to go too heavy. It's a tricky one. Um, in a way, um, it's kind of an ideal track car to strip out and cage. Um, Clive's getting a bit close here. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I'm, as, as you can see at the minute, I'm dailying it and the girls love it. So mm. uh, I think they'd be, I'd have to buy another one <laughs> if I was going to strip out and track it. Because I don't. I, I think the Tez is the firm favourite out of all the cars at the minute. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. No, definitely. I think I need to do something similar. Although I think I'm going to be in the uh, TVR a bit more uh, once that's sorted. So, so there we go. Andy, thank you so much, and I can't wait to uh, get that visit in the diary. So uh, come and see all the other toys. You're very welcome. Thanks very much. Tim. Oh, uh, and I must grab you a, a Charge Heads T-shirt. One size fits all, so we're all good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> XL if you got them. Yeah. Thanks, good Tim. man. Cheers, Cheers mate. mate. We have had an amazing EV event. Like I said earlier, quality, not qu uh, quantity, as uh, Clive will uh, testament, who's uh, been the cameraman today, so thank you. She's about to be run over by an E46. But yeah, great event, 
make sure you're at the next event and the next one will be Monday evening at an official EV event and it will be at the Stratford upon Avon caffeine and machine so look out for the uh, socials for the links for that so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time